Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Priyadashini, Associate Professor from the Department of Microbiology. I'm going to talk about plant microbe interactions. First, we'll see what are interactions. Interactions are nothing but some sort of association or relationship between two or more organisms. They may be of positive interaction or negative interactions. They can take place between any kind of organisms, between microbes and microbes, microbes and plants, microbes and animals, microbes and insects, etc. Under positive interactions, we have synergistic and mutualistic interactions. A typical example for positive interactions are ecto and endo mycorrhizal fungal interaction and the interaction between nitrogen fixing bacteria and plants. In synergistic in interactions, we have rhizosphere, phyllosphere, and spermosphere kind of interactions. First, we are going to see about the mycorrhizal interactions. The term mycorrhiza literally means fungus root, and this term was first used by A. Frank. It defines the mutualistic association between roots of higher plants and fungi. This fungi is highly habited, meaning they will be seen in the immediate vicinity of or within roots. In this association, the fungi used to absorb nutrients from the soil and supply to the crops. In return, the roots of the plant supply carbohydrates, which are the photosynthate product of the plants. Occurrence of the mycorrhizae occur in almost all terrestrial plants, not as specific as nitrogen fixing symbiosis. The plants may have several mycorrhiza, meaning they can form symbiosis with the roots of several kinds of plants. Extent of symbiosis depends on fertility of the soil. Higher the fertility leads to low mycorrhizal infection, resulting in poor symbiosis, whereas the lower fertility leading to high rate of infection, resulting in good symbiosis. Types of mycorrhiza. They are of ectomycorrhizae and endomycorrhizae. The characteristic feature of ectomycorrhizae are they are mutually beneficial union between fungi and roots of vascular and non-vascular plants. The host plant involved in this association are gymnosperms. The fungal partner involved are basidiomycetes, ascomycetes, and phycomycetes. They are more common in temperate regions and they are capable of growing apart from the root and can also grow on any artificial media containing simple sugars and vitamins. And these fungi have a poor competitive saprophyte because they found a tough time in competing with other microbes in soil. The endomycorrhiza are commonly called as BAM fungi, meaning vesicular, arbuscular, mycorrhiza, and they are ubiquitous in nature. They are in association with agricultural crops, shrubs, tropical trees, and some temperate trees. The host plant involved are belonging to ericaceae and orchidaceae members of higher plants and fruit trees like citrus, coffee, rubber. The fungal member involved in this association are belonging to non septate zygomycetes and phycomycetes and their obligate biotroph, meaning nutritional requirements are not specific and they are highly restricted to natural environment so they do not grow on synthetic media. And they can be classified according to the morphological characteristics of the spores, producing large resting spores, which can survive adverse conditions and forming a germ tube. And these germ tube dies off if it is unable to encounter an infective plant root. Next, we'll see about the mechanism of infection. In case of ectomycorrhiza, during infection process, the ectomycorrhizal fungi in soil are stimulated by the root metabolites, which makes, the, makes them to grow towards the root. There in which the hyphae started aggregating around the root and penetrate between the epidermis and the cortex. Hence, they form a structure called hartic net. Hartic net means a fungal sheath surrounding the root in which the fungal hyphae between the root cells. Eventually, the roots get surrounded by fungal mantle. The fungal hyphae started replacing the fine lateral root hairs of the host root system and thus modify it structurally. Thus, the host root system that is infected with ectomycorrhiza looks stunted and dichotomously branched. Finally, the fungal hyphae on the exterior of the root 
serves as an extension of the root and stores large amount of carbohydrates. Coming to the infection mechanism in case of endomycorrhiza, initial infection proceeds similarly to that of an ectomycorrhiza. But the difference is in case of ecto, the fungi remains outside the roots and act as an extension of roots. Whereas in case of endomycorrhiza, the fungal hyphae penetrate the host root cells and enters inside. There in which the fungal hyphae started traversing and ramifying in the root cortex. The branches from the intracellular hyphae enters the cortical cells, undergo further branching, resulting in highly branched hyphal structures called arbuscles. These arbuscles are short-lived and serve as a nutrient transfer mechanism between fungus and the host, especially the phosphate transfer is possible across the living membrane if of the host and fungi via arbuscles. When the association is well established, the hyphal swelling started developing. They started forming vesicles on the mycelium, both inside and outside the root. These vesicles are defined as a sac-like terminal swellings at the tip of the hyphae and contains many lipid droplets, which functions as a storage organs. These BAM fungi disseminate both actively and passively. Active transfer is possible from one root to the another root by mycelial growth through soil, whereas passive transfer is possible through biotic agents like rodents, worms, insects, birds, and abiotic agents like wind and water, etc. Next, we'll see about the second example of positive interaction, that is interaction between uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria and plants. Some soil bacteria and blue-green algae are capable of reducing the atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia in their cells. This process of nitrogen reduction is called as diazotrophy or nitrogen fixation. The microbes which reduces the atmospheric nitrogen are termed as nitrogen fixers or diazotrophs. And this ammonia produced during nitrogen fixation is readily available to the plant directly. The diazotrophs are broadly divided into non-symbiotic diazotrophs and symbiotic diazotrophs. Non-symbiotic diazotrophs meaning the microbes which live independently in the soil and do nitrogen fixation are termed as non-symbiotic diazotrophs, example, Stobacter, Oscillatoria, Prostridium, etc. The symbiotic diazotrophs are the microorganisms which establish symbiotic association with plant root and do nitrogen fixation, example, Rhizobium, Anabina, Nasta, and Azospirellum. We will be concentrating on symbiotic nitrogen fixation because this is an example for positive interaction. The microorganism live in close association with green plants, fix atmospheric nitrogen. In turn, microbes derive nourishment from the plants. Generally, the plants, which are not able to take up the nitrogen directly from the atmosphere, they need the help of the microbes, which are able to fix the nitrogen in their cells. So during this association, some diazotrophs induce nodule development in the plant root. They are termed as rhizocinosis. Example, rhizobium, franchia. Say at the same time, nitrogen fixation can take place in the root of legume plant, leguminous plant. Exceptionally, sometimes it happens in non-leguminous plant also. Example, Trima cannabina. Generally, the symbiotic diazotrophs used to form nodules in the host plant and fix the nitrogen. In some exceptional cases, some symbiotic diazotrophs without producing root nodules in the host plant, but at the same time, they can fix nitrogen. Example, Azospirellum astrobacter. And they generally take place in monocot and dicot plants. So we'll see about the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. It includes host specificity and root nodulation. First, we'll see about the host specificity. Although several rhizobia species live in the rhizosphere of legume plants, only specific species can establish association with particular roots. This selective infection of rhizobium on specific plants are termed as host specificity. Example, rhizobium leguminous serum can establish form root nodules in pea plant, whereas rhizobium physoli 
They form the root nodules in the root of beans. At the same time, rhizobium japonicum are possible in the soya beans. The host specificity depends on a specific flavonoid secretion by the root of the legumes. This, you can see the picture which depicts the host specificity. Okay, the uh, plant roots usually secrete some flavonoid secretions called luteolin, which is a dihydroxy flavone along with the lectins. They used to induce certain genes of the rhizobium species. In turn, the rhizobium produce a host determinant compound, which is a capsule of polysaccharide on its cell wall. The lectins have the affinity towards this capsule of polysaccharide, so goes and binds with the capsule of polysaccharide on one end. On the other end, they bind with the cell wall of the cell wall polysaccharide of the root hair. Hence, they act as a bridge between the cell wall of the plant and the cell, cell wall of the rhizobium, there in which the infection starts. Root nodulation. So you can see the picture which depicts the steps involved in root nodulation. What is root nodulation? The formation of root nodules after the root gets infected with rhizobium are called as nodulation. So after infection, the host plant by the host specific rhizobium started secreting cytokinin and polymyxin B. This cytokinin induces a curling at the tip of the root hair. The cell wall of the root hair at the point of contact form an invaginate and form a tubular structure called infection thread. There in which the rhizobium enters the infection thread, grows continuously, penetrate the cortical cells of the plants. And they started branching repeatedly and form the infection thread. And they finally reaches the cortex. The cortical cells near the epiderm endodermis get penetrated by the infection thread. And the rhizobium here, they start releasing some growth hormones. In the inner cortical cells around the infection thread, divide and grow faster and form a mass of cells where the chromosome number get doubled. By the continuous growth, the mass of the cells protrudes from the surface of the root in the form of a nodule. The rhizobium started multiplying within the infection thread as well as in the cortical cells get discharged. The central portion of the nodule is occupied by a dense mass of rhizobia. Each cortical cell has four to six pleomorphic rhizobium called bacterioids. They may be club-shaped, Y-shaped or branched. The membranes surrounding the bacteroids are known as peribacteroid membrane. The, peribacteri the bacteroids fix the atmospheric nitrogen and henceforth the nitrogen is fi fixed inside the cell of the cortex of the plant. The genes encoding for the proteins are called nodulins helps to maintain the structure of the root nodule, which supports the nitrogen fixation, assimilate the fixed nitrogen in the nodules. Next example is leaf nodulation. This is a uh, rare case of this. The symbiotic association of certain bacterial endophytes with the leaves of certain plants, like Rubiaceae and Miscellaceae family, leads to the formation of nodule-like structure on the leaves. Plants like Psychotria, Pavita, and Pomelia received importance as leaf nodule-producing plants. The important infecting bacteria belonging to Mycobacterium rubiaceum, Mycoplasma rubra, Flavobacterium species, Bacterium rubiaceum, Philobacterium rubiaceum, and Klebsiella rubiaceum. Even though they are in symbiotic association, the plants will not receive much advantage. Some of the benefits are available for both plants and bacterial partners. The bacterial partners involved here secrete phytohormones like cytokines for the growth of the plant and also prevents the entry of pathogenic spores from entering through the leaves. In turn, the plants provide shelter and photosynthate for the survival of the bacterial partners and form a stable philospheric microflora within the plants. Next, coming to the negative interaction between plant and microbe. The example for them is parasitism. Parasitism is the only negative interaction that happens in plant. As parasites, bacteria, fungi, viruses, and algae cause infection in the host plant, leading to the development of disease resulting in loss of commercial value. To initiate infection and disease, the parasite should accomplish three important things. It should enter the host plant, 
It must establish itself to the specific target site within the plant. The parasite should overcome the defense mechanism and cause the disease. And this is the mechanism of infection. Bacteria and virus enters the host tissue through natural opening like stomata, lenticels, etc. And also through open wounds like scratches. Fungi can enter through natural opening or through spores falling on the plant surface form a special adaptation called aprosorium. These aprosorium anchors the spores to the substratum form from arise a small projection called infection peg, which has sharp tip through which penetrates the host cell actively. Once the pathogen enters the host tissue, it overcomes the defense mechanism by production of phytoalexins or induction by elicitas, and then thus establish relationship with the host. The interaction is of two kinds, biotrophic and necrotrophic. Biotrophic in sense, the pathogen enters the into harmonious relationship with the host and obtain nutrition from the plants for a long time without killing it, without harming it. Whereas necrotrophic, once the pathogen enters the host, kills it first and then derives the nutrition from the dead tissue. After the disease is established, a series of symptoms can be visualized on the full surface indication of the disease onset. An example is a plant parasite. In case of bacteria, Erbenia pestis, causing soft fruit in carrots, Danthomonas campestris, blight in rice, fungi fusarium oxysporum, build disease in cotton and banana, viruses tobacco mosaic virus, causing mosaic disease in tobacco. Thank you.